Hi everyone, it's me. It's time for a new vlog. It's time for some new books to read. This week I'm going to be challenging myself to read at least 103 pages every single day. I'm really excited about it because I set a goal for myself to read at least 50 pages every day for this whole year and we'll see how that goes. I mean, it's not going to be super strict, but I, I want to spend my time better this year. So instead of like going on my phone, pick up a book and read 50 pages. I feel like that's going to be pretty doable. But for this vlog for this week, I'm bumping it up to 103. Those three extra pages are just because I like the number three and because my birthday is October 3rd. So 10, 3, 103. I just really like that number. Instead of just doing 100 flat, I'm gonna add on the extra three pages, but that is like the least amount I want to do every day this week. So if I do more than that, great. But at least 103 is the goal. I do have a little bit of a TBR for the week, but I'm only gonna tell you what I'm gonna be starting with and then I will let you know as I go what books I'll be picking up next. First, I'm going to be starting with Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This is a book that I have on my top 22 books to read in 2022. It's one that I've owned for a very, very long time. It's one that's a lot of people's all-time favorites. A lot of people say it's just really good, so I am prioritizing. Why is Benji whining? Anybody wanna let me know why Benji's whining? Stop it, I'm filming. You know how it goes. Do you want to go out on the patio? Okay. What was I saying? This is a very popular book. A lot of people love it. It's a historical fiction following a girl and her coming of age, but also there's a murder mystery. So this is what I'm going to be starting with. We'll see how it goes. It is currently Sunday today, and so this will go until about Friday, and I'm hoping to read like three different books but I'll probably only be finishing two of them because one of them is for Family Book Club. But as I said, I will get into those later once I pick them up and I will let you know what they are. So I'm on page 71. That means I will have to read to page 174 by the end of the day. The writing style is definitely something I feel like you have to get used to. It's set in like 1950s. And then there's another time uh, time jump, perspective jump to 1969. So you're following a couple different characters. Mostly the main character's name is Kaya. She is in the 1950s timeline. You're following her as a little girl. Her family situation, she is in a very unfortunate like domestic abuse situation with her father. Her mother leaves in the very, very beginning. Her four siblings slowly start to leave her as well. And so she's left as a six-year-old with her father. And I can't even imagine or fathom that as a six-year-old trying to basically fend for herself and figure out how to survive because her father doesn't provide for her. He's usually gone all the time, so she's had to like go into the shops, go to the market and like get food. And she only ever eats grits, doesn't go to school. So she like is learning all these new things. She doesn't even know how to count or read. So I can't imagine this poor little six year old. Like it just seems like a very interesting dynamic following this little girl navigate through life. She finds comfort and peace in like nature in the animals around her and her family is not a wealthy family so when she goes into town a lot of the rich people call her marsh trash their family is just definitely looked down on because they don't have money yeah it's just a very interesting perspective there but then you jump whatever it is 16 17 years later following a couple different characters i'm not really sure if there's a main character there because it's like told in third perspective so you're not necessarily in anybody's head but in 1969 you're following several characters when they discover a dead body by the marsh and so there's an, an entire investigation going on but like i said the writing style is a little bit weird you have to get used to it because the like all the dialogue is very slang-ish so sometimes that's hard to read yeah i mean it's not terrible like i'm enjoying it i'm interested to see where it goes Okay, so I'm about halfway there, several hours later now. I'm on page 126. It's going okay. 
I'm not really quite sure what the hype is about this book and why it's like some people's favorite of all time. I think I've gotten used to the writing style by now, but it's very, very slow paced. It doesn't feel like much is happening. We're just at this point following Kaya growing up. Some of the time jumps have skipped a couple years now. We're like out of the 50s now and we're into the 60s uh, with her. I mean, she's a very likable character because she's obviously been through a lot and you're following her journey as she's going through these things it's pretty heartbreaking i just i'm not really sure where it's going because i feel like i feel like we've already covered a lot but also not covered that much like because it's slow paced but it also feels like just in those that last like 50 pages that i read we did quite a few big time jumps so i'm just curious to see like where the story is going to go from here and we're not getting much of the other perspective in the last 50 pages that I read, there weren't that many updates on the murder case from the other timeline, which is really all I wanna know, like all I care about at this point, and hopefully it pays off, but yeah. Just a little average right now. I did like the chapter, um, I believe it was chapter 16, where we got a little bit more of a backstory on Kaya's father. Also, I liked the reasoning behind Kaya's name thought that was cool but yeah we've met some new characters so it's now 6 45 ish p.m and i still have about 50 pages left right 126 i'm going to page one at least 171 but that doesn't end on a chapter so going to 176 so 50 exactly more pages i want to apologize in advance for all the noise benji's gonna make in this clip I just gave him one of those little like peanut butter filled bone things. It's like an antler. He got it for Christmas, so I just gave it to him. And he likes to go under the bed and push it up against the wall and make lots of noise with it. We're just gonna let him do his thing because he's so happy and content right now with that. First things first, it snowed last night. Doesn't snow here very often where I live, so when it does, it makes me very happy. Update, I managed to read the page count yesterday. I read a total of 105, so that's good. So I'm on page 176. It's just a book about loneliness and this poor girl's life. I don't know, I feel like the end is going to have to completely wow me for it to bump itself up from a three star right now at this point, that's how I'm feeling. Just so far, it's not doing that much for me, but it's still an enjoyable experience. I'm not dreading reading this book. I'm actually really enjoying having a page goal each day to motivate me to get through this book in like three days. I'm just under halfway so I don't know if I'll finish it today but if I could that would be amazing. So it's Tuesday day three of this vlog and I finished this this morning. Yesterday I ended up reading a total of 143 pages which got me to about page 320. And then I read the rest this morning before I even got out of bed because I was so close to finishing it last night. I was like, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow because it was getting too late. I finished my first book of 2022. Unfortunately, I didn't love it though. <laughs> I didn't love my first book that I read this year, which is very sad to say, but also kind of fitting that my first book of 2022 is a two star. I'm very confused as to why it's a lot of people's favorites of all time. I don't get it. I don't necessarily see the appeal other than with our main character, Kaya. Sorry, I didn't realize my straw was in the way. I really admire her character and I loved following her as a person and to see the way she kind of persevered and made something of herself and her circumstances and she was a fighter against all odds. I really appreciated that in a main character, for sure. However, I thought everything else about the story was really boring, exhausting to read, which it makes sense, in a sense, why the narrative was so exhausting for me to read and to get through, especially during the last like third of the book. Once you get to like page 250, there's a complete shift in tone, I felt like, and then there were just no answers or running around in circles. And that's realistic, but 
not entertaining for a novel. It felt too long. One of the things that I don't love in books is like when you start out knowing the result of something but then none of the puzzle pieces are really coming together in any way and then the payoff in the end is not worth it. One other book that I read that I actually loved and gave five stars that did this is 56 days but that structure i guess and the shorter chapters and how often we switched time jumps and perspectives that's what kept it fresh and exciting but this one was just really long and exhausting and i didn't find it very entertaining unfortunately but i did again appreciate kaya as a main character and all of the themes of loneliness, isolation, abandonment, nature, human connection, sexuality, all of those themes were well discussed. It just really tanked in entertainment and intrigue. Like that entire factor to make me want to continue, <laughs> it was really dwindling. And so then I pushed through, but not like it wasn't that hard for me to finish, so it wasn't, again, it wasn't like terrible. It wasn't a terrible experience for me. It was just missing a lot of qualities that I find good in a book, you know? I could never say that this is a favorite book of mine. I did find a new favorable main character. She is memorable too. I feel like the story as a whole is pretty memorable, and I feel like it's going to be something I will look back on and think, oh yeah, that was nice, but it wasn't great. It wasn't amazing. Those are my thoughts. Two stars. This morning I read about 48 pages, so I still have 55 to read today. My next plan of action is to read Under the Magnolias by T.I. Lowe. This is for my family book club. This is our first pick of the year. I have to read the first 125 pages by tomorrow night, which is perfect because I'll probably read most of it, if not all of it, today. I don't know if I'll be able to get 125 pages in, but at least like a lot. And then obviously I'll finish the rest tomorrow and then count it towards the third book that I'm going to be picking up. I don't know anything about it other than it's more of a drama, I've heard, because normally we read like romance we try to branch out a little bit but we always kind of end up reverting back to romance which is fine but i'm excited for this one i have not heard like anybody talking about it i don't know when it was published when it came out it came out in 2021 okay i did it i read 103 pages total today only 55 of this so that's where i'm at here i did it know anything going into this one as i mentioned before i said all i knew about it was that it's like a drama after reading that little section uh i obviously learned some things but i'm still very confused about where the story's going so first of all immediately i was making connections with this one to where the crawdads sing i was like wow these two are already very similar because crawdads takes place in north carolina this one is south carolina and it's like a historical so this one's in the 1980s we're following a family where the main character is the girl the daughter that is left to become the main caretaker of the home of the family because her mom dies during childbirth. The main character's name is Austin, so then she's like 13 or something and she's left to raise her six siblings and also trying to keep her father afloat because he's not coping well with the death of his wife. It's kind of that same thing, that connection similarity there with a young girl having to fend for herself. Um, but now on top of it for this one, she's taking care of a lot of other people too. But it also has a lot to do with religion. The family is Christian, so this is like a Christian fiction novel and it's like historical coming of age and it seems like it's gonna have a lot to do with like mental illness and stuff. One of her brothers is mentally disabled, another one is physically disabled, and then there's two sets of twins in the family. So there's the ones that were just born and then 
the ones that are like six years younger than Austin. Just met the whole family and I don't really know like what's gonna happen. I didn't read the synopsis at all, so I'm just kind of learning as I go. I don't know what the plot's gonna be. I need to finish reading my portion for Family Book Club tomorrow. That'll count towards the 100, 103 pages that I read tomorrow, but then the rest of that page count will be for a different book, which I'm excited to talk about. Um, but yeah, now it's 10.30 p.m. and I'm gonna go to sleep. So I will see you tomorrow. Okay, um, what do I have to say about this? Let's see. Oh, Ugh, I hate that noise. On page 125 of this, and it's going fine. I think it's gotten better now since reading the last like 40 pages because like in the beginning there's obviously lots of introduction and getting a feel for the characters and their little community of churchgoers and their town which is like i think called magnolia because there's a ton of magnolias in the town it's south carolina so very southern vibes and set in the 1980s so it's like older southern vibes <laughs> i don't know it's it's really good i think the writing is captivating kind of addicting for me to read i'm enjoying i don't really know how to ex describe it or explain it but it's a good thing i like the way the author is explaining different scenarios and the internal monologue of our main character austin i feel like her family is very likable besides the father the father's kind of a deadbeat but you know he's going through some problems because of what happened but definitely not bad in my opinion but i don't know who to recommend this to because the, the subjects that it touches on but it's fun too like there's some funny scenes and good humor obviously this is gonna go over lots of like their beliefs and that's going to affect a lot of their decision making and stuff like that at first i was thinking that maybe it's like for an older generation but since we're following like a 15 year old main character at where i'm at right now it seems like every chapter it fast forwards a year uh so far that's what's been happening i don't know i just feel like older generations enjoy historical fiction more maybe that's just me because i'm not a huge fan of historical fiction but like i said the writing is nice i'm excited to talk about it during book club tonight and see like where everybody else is at with it and what they're feeling but since i got up to 100 page 125 i can't read any further until we have book club i probably won't pick it up again at all this week and i'll just read it next week so that's all my thoughts on that one for this vlog but my third book and i think my final book for this vlog is the anthropocene reviewed by john green and i was going to read this in december and i was going to read it for a different vlog but i just completely didn't pick it up and never got to it uh this is a collection of essays about our human centered planet i think it sounds very fun i don't know i'm just like really in the mood to read something like this i don't think i've ever read a collection of essays before unless it was for school or whatever but but just like in my own personal time i've never picked up anything like this before and i do like john green i've only read one of his books turtles all the way down and i loved that one that was one of my most surprising five stars from last year 274 pages so i can easily get this read by the end of the week but yeah this is where i'm going to be reading my next I think I have to read at least 55 more. Let me do the math real quick. To reach my goal of 103 today, I need to read, uh, let's see, I'm on page 125 of that. Minus 56 where I started, 69. 103 minus 69 is 34. I only have 34 pages left to read today. It's only 6 p.m. So once I sit down and start reading, I'm sure I'll read a lot, a lot more than 34 pages but I have to at least get up to that to make my 103 pages gold today. But yeah, I will update you once I get through this a little bit and have thoughts.
I realize you haven't seen much else of my house in this vlog. I've been in my bedroom a lot because I go through phases where I'm either always in the living room or I'm always in the bedroom. And this week I've just always been in the bedroom. <laughs> but it's now Thursday, so day five of this vlog. Day five of me reading 103 pages at least every day. Yesterday I managed to do it again. Um, I think I read 104 pages just so that I could read the last page to get to the chapter break. We're back at it again today. I've been reading my page count for today, but I haven't updated since since I started reading this at all because it got too late last night and then I have had terrible cramps today. So I just was physically unable to do anything other than lay in bed with my heated blanket and read. So that's what I've been doing. I'm on page 103 of this now, which is not planned. <laughs> I'm on page 103, but today I've read, I started at page 55, so however many that is. I have to get up to 158. This is a fun time because it's so different, like it's not fiction, um, and that's different for me. It's been a long time since I've picked up anything other than fiction. It's always interesting to read stuff like this so I'm definitely having a good time in the beginning it felt a little slow because we were just talking about a couple things that I could care less about and he was also going into a lot about like evolution and stuff which I don't personally believe in so it, that was weird I mean I have no problem reading about evolution but since I don't believe in it it's like a weird thing to read when it's like from the perspective of someone who does believe in it this is great when it's about something that interests me like there's a lot of things in here that are just super random and niche to him to john green because of his life experiences with these certain things so okay if you don't know what this is the anthropocene is basically this phenomenon i guess of how humans affect the planet i'm not going to explain this well i'm sorry but it's like, it says, in the Anthropocene, there are no disinterested observers, there are only participants. So it's like how humans have profoundly reshaped the planet and its biodiversity. He's so far talked about topics like Diet Dr. Pepper, which is the most memorable one so far. He's also talked about air conditioning, scratch and sniff stickers. I don't know why I'm trying to remember because it's literally the table of contents. Haley's or Halley's comet, uh, velociraptors, teddy bears, the hall of presidents. I'm not going to be able to pronounce the scientific name for staph infections, but that's in here. The internet, sunsets. The book is basically about him going into these different topics and rating them on a five star scale. He is going to go into things like the penguins of Madagascar and the QWERTY keyboard which are the two that kind of hooked me to want to pick this up and i see that the penguins of madagascar are going to be in the next chapter i'm about to read so i can't wait to read about that one but oh they oh he talks about super mario kart uh the notes app googling strangers sycamore trees the world's largest ball of paint whispering <laughs> i don't know monopoly this is just really fun and a chill time sometimes it's going completely over my head and i feel really dumb reading it because i don't know if it's his writing or the way he's explaining it but i'm really lost sometimes it could also be due to the fact that i'm disinterested in some of the topics it's a grand old time that has been what's going on oh i was gonna show you my um bookmark that i'm using for this is a picture of Riley and I being crowned homecoming king and queen our senior year of high school <laughs> so there's a little fun fact for you so I went out and ran some errands today I had to go to Staples before I started feeling super crampy I got some things done but then while I was out it really hit me hard so I was like all right let's hurry up and get home and I'm gonna cuddle up in bed so I ran to Staples and printed out the pop sugar 2022 reading challenge printable 
and I'm starting to fill out some of the books that I'm gonna be reading for each of those prompts. Um, that's just like a fun little challenge. Like I was thinking of like vlogging the whole thing, but uh, I don't think it's gonna line up perfectly with the books because like some of the books I'm gonna be talking about in different vlogs. So I don't know if like that was gonna work very well. Maybe in the future I will do a whole dedicated vlog to that. I just wanted to see if I could do it. There are some props on there prompts on there that I really don't feel like doing <laughs> but we'll see so I did that and then I went to Target and guys I need to talk about something really quick it's kind of annoying how when you make a video talking about a certain thing and if you're me you completely you don't have any of your ideas fully developed when you're talking about them in a video and so all those people that are what that watch that video will hear me talk about it there but then later off camera several days later i'm thinking about oh i want to add this certain thing to what i was talking about in that video or i want to take away a certain thing i was talking about in that video so i'll bring it up in my next bit video but how am i supposed to know how am i supposed to get everyone who watched that video to watch that other video to then put the pieces together and not be confused about when I talk about it in another video in relation to when I talked about it the second time like I'm assuming you heard it the first time then the second time so then when I'm talking about it the third time I don't have to keep reverting back to oh if you heard me say this or you watched this video where I talked about it here then you'll know or if you didn't let me catch you up like that's what's so annoying <laughs> about making videos like this because i want to make sure everyone's on the same page but that's impossible so that's why people jump to conclusions or make their own assumptions about things about people on the internet because they don't know the whole story they don't put in the time and effort to know the whole story all of that to say i wanted to bring it up just so i don't forget about it later if you watch this video or if you watch this video you will have already heard me talk about my goal for 2022 for my read to buy ratio this year i made a goal that i want to read seven physically owned books from 2021 before i buy a new book and later i was thinking about the restrictions of that goal and thinking being very sad about how i can't buy that many new books this year because i have to read seven before i can buy a new one but then i thought of a couple exceptions okay so hear me out I went to Target today and I bought three books. <laughs> the goal of reading the seven is to knock down my physical TBR. It's not in any way like a saving money. Well, it is in some way, I guess, a saving money thing. But this time I had a Target gift card that I used. So it had nothing to do with like saving money on books. But it has everything to do with me adding to my, TB my physical TBR before I'm taking anything away. I've only read one book. And I've already bought three new ones. But the exceptions that I've decided to make are they can be books that I am planning to read for a video or they are for like a book club, a readathon or something that I know I'm participating in and I need that book for it. Or if it's a book that I know for a 100% fact, I will be reading it this year. But then on top of that, those books do not count towards the seven I need to read of the physically owned books I have in order to then buy one new random book. So that new random book can be anything I want. So like there are plenty of books on my want to buy list that are under the category of like I'm interested in but they are not in my reading plans for the near future at all. Like they're a book I want to own but I have no idea when I'm going to read it. That is what that one random book would be. But for the three books that I bought today, two of them are ones I needed for my top 22 list. I bought them so that I can definitely read them this year. And then the other one I bought is for Books and Lala's Buzzwordathon in April, I think. So I needed to buy it so I could read it for that. Okay, so there's my exception. Those are my rules. I have finally everything fleshed out for that stinking goal. I wish I just like brainstormed a little bit harder and thought a little harder before I put that idea out there. But that's me guys. I don't have ideas fully developed when I first talk about them. So I always have to revert back and keep updating you on them. But that is the update. I hope you heard me right so that I don't have to keep coming back to this point 
and I'm glad that I finally got it out there so I don't have to wait and talk about it in another video. If you didn't hear me talk about them in these two videos, that's fine because I didn't talk about them enough like I did just now. Just now is the final fleshed out idea of my goal so you don't even need to go back and watch those. You definitely can, they will be linked down below. But yeah, that is that. I know you guys are dying to know the three books that I bought today. Do I want to tell you? Do you want to know? I will tell you. But I have to get up and get those books. The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Maybe? Yanagihara. Yanagihara. Thick boy. And Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. These two are on my top 22 list, and A Little Life is what I'm reading for Buzzwordathon in April. If you're wondering, I guess I should mention that the buzzword for April, I think it's April, is read a book with small or big or little or huge or like a size word in the title. So, A Little Life. I finished. I enjoyed my time with this. And there were lots of fun, interesting facts that were included in some of these stories that I found fascinating. A lot of the topics in general I thought were interesting. I appreciated all of the work and research that was done. And I also enjoyed learning a little bit more about John Green and his life through this book. Some of my favorite essays or chapters would be Piggly Wiggly. That one I think is my favorite just because the history behind it, very fascinating. And I had no idea about any of that. I also enjoyed the Penguins of Madagascar chapter and the one about Googling strangers. That one was actually surprisingly sad. I liked the one about Super Mario Kart whispering i loved that one the world's largest ball of paint there were some good quotes in here overall about humanity i mean that's basically what the whole book is about specifically there were some good quotes about togetherness the nature of man relationships love here's one quote that i really liked on page 188 one of the strange things about adulthood is that you are your current self but you are also all the selves you used to be, the ones you grew out of but can't ever quite get rid of. The chapter about Bonville's salt flats, Bonneville, I think that's how you say it, Bonneville, looks like this. And it's something that is in Utah, I think. I would recommend this book. I am giving it four stars. I gave it four stars. For the most part, I think I agreed with him, but he has... Um, lots of personal experiences with these topics and then that's like kind of what you learn about through each one so yeah it was very interesting if you're a fan of John Green I would definitely say check it out if you're not a fan of John Green I don't know if I can convince you enough to try it out if you don't know who John Green is check it out <laughs> yeah it just wasn't like exactly what I was expecting. Sometimes I said before like it was just going over my head a little bit. It could have been the writing or my disinterest in the topic. So sometimes it just like the words weren't hitting right. But overall it was enjoyable. So let me see. I have this cute little notebook that I'm jotting down my thoughts that I have while I'm reading just so that I make sure I hit all of my points when I update the vlog. So let me go back and read, make sure I'm not forgetting to say anything. I did mark down how it's kind of sad reading about how paranoid and anxious John Green is. Hearing him tell all these stories of his life and how, especially in 2020, he had a really hard time with anxiety and depression uh, as I'm sure many people did and I understand that all the things that he was talking about that were putting him in difficult situations I understand how they can be nerve-wracking but I believe it's not good to live in fear so it was really hard to 
be reading about him being constantly fearful and just knowing that that's no way to live so um yeah that was kind of sad to read how that's a serious struggle for him and how he's on medication for his mental illness and stuff and i didn't realize he struggled with all of these things so extremely uh like i said i just learned a lot about him and his life that's it those are the notes that i have i covered everything yeah i would say definitely read it if it sounds interesting to you okay and that's it for this vlog so let's go ahead and give you a little wrap up of how this week went and how i accomplished my challenge i'm very proud of myself for reading at least 103 pages every day it seemed pretty easy i made good time for reading at the right times in the day it helps that i don't have much else going on in my life so i have a lot of time on my hands to be reading so i'm very pleased with how this week went so let's go over each day and tell you how much i read so starting on sunday i read a total of 105 pages with where the crawdads sing and then on Monday, I read another 143 pages. On Tuesday, I wrapped this one up and then started Under the Magnolias and read a total of 104 pages. On Wednesday, I finished reading the portion I needed to for Family Book Club and then started The Anthropocene Reviewed and read a total of 123 pages. Thursday, I read 114 pages. And Friday, I read 105 pages. And then, as for ratings go, I gave Where the Crawdads Sing two stars and The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green four stars. And now, this is still a current read, so I do not have a rating for this one yet. And that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed this vlog and let me know if you would like to see another one like this or if you have any other ideas for me to do. I would love to hear your suggestions and hopefully, I can keep up the good habits of reading a certain amount of pages every day and hopefully that bleeds into the following weeks like i said before that my goal for the year is to read at least 50 pages so i'm going to continue with that habit and hopefully make some good progress with my reading this year because of that yeah that's it so i hope you guys are all having a great day and i will see you in my next video very soon bye <laughs>